Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we brought you the best in books, entertainment, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Whether you're tuning in on the radio dial here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM, we welcome you. Also, those joining us are our various affiliates around the world. We're glad to have all of you with us as well. I'm excited to welcome Derek Mears to our program today. Now, Derek is an actor that has been able to be a part of so many great projects, whether you're talking about Friday the 13th or, or even Twin Peaks. He's been a part of those shows that, of course, we love to watch and talk about, but also sometimes can be a little bit scary. Uh, that can into 2017, where he's a part of a great film that I had a chance to watch called From Jennifer. We're going to talk to Derek not only about his career, but also the new project, what it's been like for him to see the response. It's available on demand. We'll remind you of that a little bit later on our program, as well as how you all can stay connected with Derek and all the great things that he has going on as well. Derek, hello to you and welcome to the program. Hey, how are you, brother? Thank you so much for having me. Oh, look, I'm glad to speak with you, and, and I, I meant exactly what I said. I mean, you know, I, you know you're, you're great at what you do, but you can be a little scary. I think that carries, <laughs> that, 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 that carries over into this project we're going to be talking about today. So, Derek, let's go back, though, first. I mean, what has it been like for you to not only do what you love as an actor and bring characters to life, but also to see the response you've had from your fans? Man, I am so lucky to have a career in general. It, it's it's insane. Like, first off, my my life philosophy is that no one is better than anybody else. Well, skills in different areas. Do you love? Mm-hmm. Try to move forward and respect everybody until you give it the reason not to. And yeah. it's it's the craziest thing that the phone keeps ringing, and I'm, I I feel guilty in a sense of having a career from this longevity for so long because I have so many talented friends who are artists in different mediums or actors who haven't had the opportunities that I've had. And I'm always like, man, if it ends right now, universe, it's been an amazing run. Thank you so much for for allowing me to tell stories and entertain people. Yeah, I think that is the great thing. So have you always known, uh, Derek, that, that storytelling through film or television was something that you were meant to do or wanted to do? Uh, honestly, it was just stories in general, uh, you know. Growing up, uh, I'm originally from Bakersfield, California, and my background is just like any other kid. You know, I was into like comic books and sci-fi and horror, and I was really into Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and with Dungeons and Dragons, I'm like, it's weird because of that. I'm like, to my mom, she's like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I go, I don't know. I just, I don't need to be rich or famous. I go, I just want to make enough just to survive and be able to play with my friends. And I'm like, how can I do that? And it was crazy enough. Like the, it's like Dungeons and Dragons now. I guess I'm kind of doing that professionally with TV and film and telling stories and acting. So it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, you mentioned the longevity, and I alluded to it as well, uh, Derek. You know, I think one of the big things for you is that you have not. You know, it, you know, and this is, I think, is something that a lot of people talk about, and we talk about a lot on this program about being typecast and being seen as just one way. How important has that been for you to be able to bring different types of characters to life on film? Uh, it's it's been really important I, for for myself. Like it's wild. I'll, I'll meet people. I'll do like an autograph signing, and they'll only know like the Jason character, and they're like, "Oh, you're mask guy," or they'll come over to the table and be like, "Oh my god, like I saw you had a guest star on Sons of Anarchy, and you had dialogue, and it was your normal face. Way to go!" And I'm like, wait, "That's what I do. What are you talking about?" <laughs> so honestly, it, I, it doesn't really. Uh, uh, when it comes to that, I'm like, man, like, like I said, my job is to entertain and tell stories. So don't remember me, remember the character. So I'm not worried about yeah. if you see me or not. Like, it's just w- w- whatever you take away from the film, if you enjoy the film, that's fantastic. Just remember the characters and not so much me. That's fine. Yeah. For sure. Well, I, I think they both have been memorable, both your characters and yourself as well. And I think part of that is because you have made yourself so accessible. Did you go into this career knowing that that was going to be an important, Derek? Or, did, or is that just a part of you that we're seeing that you are someone who genuinely likes to interact with those that are communicating with you? Uh, no, I, I like to interact with people. It's, well, uh, honestly, I, 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 I had a hard time doing interviews coming up. Uh, originally, and at one point, I had my acting coach. Uh, he and I sat down, and I, I go, I don't, I feel like it's so arrogant, like I'm talking about myself. And he goes, he goes, you have a unique story outside of your TV and film story. He goes, growing up in that small town of Bakersfield, uh, you grew up with alopecia areata when your hair would fall out, and it wasn't cool to be bald at that time. And he goes, you were the different kid, and you felt out of place. And he goes, your job now is as an adult to let everybody know that it's going to be okay. 
and that because we all have something that we're not happy with like some people are, think they're too tall or too short or too thin or too wide like your job that being that you're different is go you know, it's oh it's going to be great so uh the other thing that, that i like to do is with the the tv and film i go that it is just a job in a sense I, I love doing my job and i'm very fortunate for it but i try to keep that open line of communication with people to kind of pull that hollywood curtain of oz back and go look it's not the be all end all here's you know how it works and we all have the same dream and who am I to say that your dream isn't as valid as my dream? So if I can help you move forward in your dream, why wouldn't I? So it's not right. a competition. It's like we're all just different versions of each other. So I try to, you know, stay open and you know communicate with people as much as I can. Yeah, but don't get me sure. wrong. Think- there are people who are out of, out of control. Like, hey man, can you send me a pint of your blood? I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> thank you. You sure I can't bite your neck for a picture? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty pretty sure. Nice to meet you, stranger. <laughs> All right. Uh, security. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Sometimes we fans we can take it a little bit too far, right? <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, it's, yeah. Sometimes, like, oh, there's some crazy. That, that's the one thing also that I love. Like when I do the audio, I see uh, the autograph signings. I call the mm-hmm. signing table my social shark cage. Going like, oh no, majority of fans, like 99 percent of fans, are super cool because I'm a fan myself and I understand it. Right. But there's that one percent going, oh my gosh, like what happened to you? Uh, you, you know, you can't come past the table. But I just, I, I'm so intrigued. Like, keep talking. Like, what, why are you chewing your finger the entire time? Okay, cool. No, no, this is cool. <laughs> well, so I tell you, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, one of those things that definitely, I think, comes with the territory. I want to say for those who are just <laughs> tuning in, either on the radio side or online, you're listening to Conversations Live. We're already having a great conversation today with actor Derek Mears. We're talking with him not only about his career he's been able to have, but what it's been like for him to do work that he loves. And, of course, the fans love it as well because they ask a lot from him. Uh, you know, and that, that carries <laughs> over into 2017, um, Derek, with this project from Jennifer. When I first heard about this film, I have to say I'm not a big horror fan. And and I will say mm-hmm. to people out there that people who you know are used to watching movies through their fingers, I think this is a film you'll be okay with because I mean there there is yeah, definitely yeah. the dark element to it, but it's also some moments that make you kind of you know laugh a little bit and and think a little bit. What you know, talk to us about how you found out about this project from Jennifer. Uh, well, from Jennifer, it's, it's a dark. It, it's it's posted as a, a dark horror comedy. Uh, it's more of like a dark comedy in general. Um, mm-hmm. the, how I got hooked up for the project is uh, Frank Merle, the writer director. Uh, we were supposed to do a different film together, and uh, uh, at the last second, we had one of the financiers uh, unfortunately back out due to health issues, and we were kind of stalled out about what we wanted to do. And then he came to me and said, he goes, hey, I just finished this other script uh, last night. It's it's like a no budget. It's super low, but it's more of an experimental thing. Like, I, you know what? Could you just read it and tell me what you think? And I read it and I go, I really like this. And he's like, I want to shoot it all on GoPros. And I'm like, Ugh, I'm not a big sound footage guy. I don't know. And he goes, no, 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 trust me. And he, he pitched me his, his unique idea. And I went, man, I go, I really like what you're talking about. Like, I, I, no offense to you at all, like, being that we haven't worked together. I don't know if you can pull off what you're saying, but I will do it. Uh, if uh, I can, I'll be your lead in this. If I can present a couple people who I think are uh, talented actors, you don't even have to hire them, but just look at them because I've had, like I said before, I've had opportunities and other people haven't. Like if I can make an opportunity for somebody that would make me feel fantastic. So I'll take a risk with my career if you'll look at these other people. And they all got hired on their own account, but the people I sent them, he hired like six of my friends uh, that I normally do comedy with, and I thought it was the f- coolest thing. But I'm really happy how the film turned out, um, and Frank did it. Like I, He pulled it off, and I, I really enjoyed the film, and I hope uh, people find uh, uh, the humor and, uh, uh, and the love for it that I have. Right. I think they will, uh, Derek. And I want to say, of course, uh, for full disclosure, Amazon is one of our partners here for Conversations Live. The film is available on Amazon.com, but it also is available mm-hmm. in other places as well. You all are able to get it on demand there as well. The, the way that we watch projects like this, and this is why I wanted to have this conversation with you, Derek, because you know when, mm-hmm. when we, I first got to know of your work, of course, we didn't have social media, <laughs> you know, the way that you know, it kind of exists <laughs> in the world today. I mean, you know, everything now has to be tweeted. And of 
of course, appropriately so. You know, the title of this film is a hashtag. That's a big part of our lives these days. What has this evolution <laughs> been like for you, the way that we kind of talk about films and find out about films? Well, it's interesting now because of the social media end of my business as an actor that it is now part of my business where I've been in producer sessions where, you know, you're, you're up for roles and one of the questions is, so what's your social media numbers? That that is an actual factor to the entertainment value or I understand it on the business sense because it's good for marketing, but it's, it's a crazy new world where you have to hop in and I'm on on social media every day trying to interact or whatever, but also, you know, it is part of my job on the promotion side where I'm supposed to promote via social media, but it's, it's wild because as a, as a person and not as an actor, I, uh, uh, so much of the, the mystique of film is, is being killed in my opinion, where they, they'll tell you everything in a trailer about a movie that's coming out. And it's like, people will be upset when they watch it and go, Oh, I'm not surprised. I'm like, yeah, because that you watched the trailer and they told you everything. I personally got yeah. to the point where if I know that I will see a film coming out like the new star Wars or something, I won't watch the trailer at all because I'll get mm-hmm. that much more surprise enjoyment going in to go. I, I don't, I don't want to taste the cake until the chef's done cooking it. That, that makes any sense. <laughs> like yes, I, I don't, I don't want to see all the ingredients that you're putting into it going like, no, no, no. Present it to me how you as an artist want to present it to me and not bits and pieces and break it down and, you know, have people do questions or, you know, uh, a review of a review or a review of, you know, of nothing. You don't even know what the story is yet. It, 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 it drives me crazy. But I, I, right. I also, I do understand and I don't knock people, you know, for, for doing it all. It's just my own personal opinion. Sure. Sure, and it makes perfect I like sense. An av- you know, I, I, like I'm, I'm an avalanche of words. Sorry, <laughs> like, blah, 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 blah. no, no. I mean, no. What you said, I mean, I totally get it. And you know, it's one of the things I do reviews for Amazon as well. And one of the things I'm always careful about is not to ruin projects, whether it's you know what a book or a film or whatever it is I'm reviewing, because you, you I mean, it does kind of take away from the whole experience of actually being able to see it. I think the other thing is, if someone had told me about from Jennifer, I'm almost sure that I would not have had the same response as I did in seeing it myself and and I think you'll you'll mm-hmm. see what I mean by this Derek because I think we all take our own thing from things and I think Absolutely. for me yeah and I think from from Jennifer there's so many parts of this that I think kind of says a whole lot about where we are as society um and you know and and what people will do um you know for you know their own sense of satisfaction or justice or you know the, you know to make them feel better <laughs> yeah. you know a, a, about yeah, yeah. things um and so I mean what has that been like for you because I noticed even on social media of course you've been talking about the film what has it been like for you to hear the response I'm actually really happy that, that, that people are getting it because my worry was originally that they, they put like on, on the marketing side, put my face and Tony Todd's face uh, who, uh, and they're kind of marketing and like, it's like the guy who played Jason, the guy who uh, played Candyman and it's giant horror movie. Yeah. Like, wait, wait, wait. That's where it's more of an indie dark comedy, but they, they've switched the marketing sense and, and fixed that. I, I don't, I have a big sense of, of uh, truth and respect and so I never want to lie or be untruthful to people. And so that, that, that's just how I am. But right. I'm, I'm really happy that people are, are firing back to that they're enjoying the film and they're understanding the, the subtext of what we're doing. And also how the film is very self-aware of what it is as a, a found footage film that doesn't, you know, of course, shake your brain out and get you want to vomit. But um, yeah. uh, uh, that, that people are understanding the, uh, the, the story that we're trying to tell or the, uh, the parable at the very end of the story, which is great. Right. Yeah, and I think that is what people will definitely enjoy for sure. You know, I asked you earlier as we were talking about the longevity, Derek, I have to ask you about, you know, what is it that keeps it fun for you? You know, as you said, the phone keeps ringing. Uh, people, of course, <laughs> recognize you. Um, you know, they they gravitate toward you. I mean, what do you think has been one of the keys for your success in your longevity? Uh, I, I, that's a great question, my friend, because I would like to know myself. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, 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 each, I, I treat each job like it's the last because it very well could be. And gotcha. like, I want to, to, you know, just explore different aspects of my own humanity. And I guess in a bigger sense, the more I understand myself, the more, you know, I, I understand you. And the more I understand you, the more I understand myself. So it's kind of that symbiotic relationship you know, just as being humans. But, um, but honestly, I, I, I wish I could give other people advice on how to have a long career like this, but I, 
I think it's because of the contracts. I look like a murderer, but I'm not that inside, <laughs> which is right. Right. Could be very well be it, but I don't know, man. Um, well, you know, the other thing I, I will I, say this I, one thing you mentioned in this conversation. I'm wondering if you have heard um, heard this. Um, you you mentioned, of course, one thing that you have that a lot of people unfortunately don't have, and that is you have values. You have things that you will do, things that you won't do, and that mm-hmm. seems to be what guides you uh, personally and kind of spills over professionally. Do you think that's one of the things that people gravitate toward when it comes to individuals they want to work with? Uh, probably. I, I mean, I'm, uh, in, I, I'm, I'm assuming so that that's kind of like human nature. Like you, also, if you people that you enjoy, like if you're pleasant, like you want to be surround yourself. Like if you had a chance, you want to hire all your friends that you, that you know could do a good job because you want to surround yourself with that, that tribe and that people. And so from right. my sense is I, I really try to just for my own compass. I mean, I'm not an angel by any sense, but I do have, I realize I have a really big part of me that, that, that is about respect and truth. Like I, I have a hard time going to theaters now. I love movies in general, but I don't go to the theaters anymore because every time I go, I have to ask somebody politely, very Swayze Roadhouse, not angrily, to go, hey, can you turn your cell phone off? Or, hey, could you stop talking? Like, this theater, isn't, this isn't your theater. There's other people trying to right. watch this, this film together. And what you're doing is being selfish and saying, I'm better than all of you because I'm more important. But you're not. We're all the same, man. We all have different, you know, just different versions of each other. So can you please respect, you know, everybody that's in the theater so we can watch this as, as a group and not have it all about you. And it just, yeah. and sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't. So it's, it's crazy. <laughs> right, so right. When it does, well, those are the times you go, oh, I'm glad I look, I'm glad I look like, like a murderer and I'm 6'5 and bald. This is great. Okay, perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I would have a problem listening to someone like, <laughs> you know, I would just say, you know, okay, to, okay to everything. <laughs> Well, there, there is one last last thing I want to mention. Thing we're going to remind our yeah. audience how they can be able to to, to see from Jennifer, and that is uh, the comedy aspect. Um, when Clint mm. Morris, our mutual friend, uh, set up this conversation, he had mentioned to me something that I actually saw on your on your Twitter page, and that was what you do with resistance comedy. Talk to us about that and what that's been like for you, because you've shared some some footage actually and some clips and steals <clears throat> uh, on your Twitter page. I mean, how did you get yeah, involved yeah. with that? Uh, we started a resistance comedy about, what, four years ago, four, five years ago. Uh, my background is, uh, it's funny, uh, uh, people get blown away because I look, the way, I look the way that I do, but I've been doing uh, improv comedy uh, professionally since I was 17, back when I was in Bakersfield. And then I moved to L.A. and I was doing it uh, here uh, with a group called Comedy Sports. And uh, uh, with improv also, for people, the listeners who don't know, improv is unscripted. There's you go up and you make it up on the spot, very much uh, like who's by it anyways. But um, yeah. uh, what we do with the resistance is uh, we improvise live in front of a, a live audience, a, a completely improvised action adventure movie. And what makes it unique is we have a, a guy in the sound booth doing lights, sounds, soundscapes. We have a guy on keyboard uh, who's uh, who's a uh, improv uh, improv. Uh, 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 per, uh, keyboard, sorry, my brain's frying out. And uh, he scores it live, making it live. And on stage, we have a bunch of stunt pads, kind of like giant Lego blocks where we'll build giant scenes together. We have ropes and ladders and carts. And so we take uh, suggestions for the audience, and then we completely improvise an action movie right after that. And they're like, the, the, uh, wait, that was completely improvised. Like nothing was, was scripted. Nothing was planned. We go, no, we don't know what's going to happen. There's no secret words. There's no nothing. We'll even come out to the audience and do improvised fights or add them into the show. And we always say like, look, it's not our show. It's everyone who's here's show. So we come out to you, please play along with us. There is no wrong. And we've been doing it for, I I guess I said four to five years now. And the shows basically sell out every show, uh, it's such a, a, a fun, fun environment because everyone plays along, and it's. I love doing it. If I could do this the rest of my life uh, and just survive, that's what I would be doing. Wow. The other thing we are doing with it right now is we're experimenting with virtual reality, and coming up, um, we have uh, fans on the uh, uh, East Coast who are asking about us doing tours and whatnot, and so what we wanted to do is start... Uh, I, I got to work on the new uh, Lord of the Rings video game, and uh, I became friends with a lot of the tech guys, and they've been bringing out their VR equipment, and we've been recording the shows. And uh, in a, probably a month or two, we'll start putting some virtual reality shows up. So it'll be as if you're in the audience and playing along with us. So I'm excited about that. Wow. 
Wow, so cool, so cool. So make sure you all are following Resistance Comedy both on Facebook and Twitter. If you all are following yes. Derek, he'll keep you all posted because he does a really good job of tagging them there. And again, the film that we've been talking about here that's available now on demand is from Jennifer. You all can make sure that you all can watch it for yourself. As I mentioned, Amazon has it, but also a lot of other great places have it for you to be able to watch it from there. And Derek, how can our audience stay connected with you? Uh, I'm on Twitter with my regular name, which is Derek Mears. Uh, and I also, it, it sounds kind of douchey, uh, but on Facebook, it's the official Derek Mears fan page. I made the mistake early on of accepting friends, family, and fans. And I didn't know it maxed out at a certain number. So I went, oh, can we get everybody to go to this other place? I still run it. I, it's not my manager. I, I still respond to people, and a lot of people won't go over. So I'm trying to get everyone to go over there so I can still interact and have an unlimited number and rather than just ca- capping off at a certain amount. Exactly. We'll definitely make sure you're staying connected with Derek. We'll post the links uh, for those who are joining us online so you all can just be able to click on it from there. Derek, great conversation with you. Thank you so much for taking out the time to do this for us and looking forward to staying connected with you. Oh, thank you so much. This has actually been such a pleasure. So uh, thank you for your time and uh, continued success for your show. I appreciate that. Same to you. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. If you all came in late and missed part of the conversation with Derek, don't worry. Thanks to our online friends. You all can catch the replay, but after we go off the air, the link is already available through our social media site. So head over to Facebook.com slash Cyrus Webb or go over to Twitter.com slash Cyrus Webb. You can click on the link there, listen to the show completely for free, and share with your friends from there as well. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Make sure you take out time to enjoy some good music, as well as a great book. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live today. You all make it a great one.